Hi, I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Air Windows angle filter. So here's definitely something we can play with a little bit. So the deal with this is, this is sort of the bedrock technology underneath angle EQ, uh, pointy guitar, chimey guitar. I'm also working on another development like that. Um, I thought I'd throw this out here because as I do more guitar plugins, and granted you can use guitar plugins and other things, but it still didn't seem as if that was the most salient thing to the modern world. Uh, I'm not sure how true that necessarily is, but this you can have now. Thing is, it's a little out of control here. You might recognize this. This is our old friend Alien Kittens. However, we can do certain things with it, like Rezo, for instance, this is our full resonance. It gets more intense as it goes into the lows. Everything kind of kicks in towards the middle of the travel of the control. Or goes completely insane. So the idea is you should be able to use this for a stop, <laughs> maybe. Here, we can make it even more abrasive. There you go. And then of course, when we drop this down into the low frequencies. It goes mad. So yeah, I'm not even going to demonstrate that more. Uh, do your own discoveries with it. Point being, this is a example of new code that I was doing in order to try to make uh, my new filters. I was trying to come up with something that was more basic than a biquad filter, but still made use of the slew rate of the sig I don't remember exactly what I was up to, but it made this. And the deal is, uh, maybe this will work for a, uh, well, what the heck, I will make a, a further noise. The point of doing this was that you'd be able to modulate the frequency more easily than you can with bike wads. So you can modulate it in that way. Or we can soften it. get this sort of tonality going out of it. Or maybe pull back on Rezo a little bit. And the idea is that since it's a simpler algorithm than like your typical biquad, you could throw a frequency into this and get away with it. Which is something you might be able to do, for instance, in the VCP rack version. And in a sense, it behaves itself. And in another sense, maybe we don't, we don't want it to behave itself.
but it is what it is. So yeah, that is uh, angle filter, which is the same basic concept as what's in angle EQ and the guitar plugins. Although there's a twist with the guitar plugins, you might not realize that the guitar plugins actually have twice as many bands as you think they do. And the intermediate bands are sort of linearly interpolating on the settings. Because uh, two things. One, it sat with the number of EQ bands better that way. And two, it went even crazier when you started to push it into the extremes. But this one is meant to be pushed to extremes. So it's like, I guess, see what you can make happen with it. Maybe this is a filter tonality with its like intense growly overdrive and all of that just built right into it, which could be useful for something that you're doing. Uh, I certainly hope so. And like it found a place in Angle EQ and those guitar plugins, maybe it'll find a place doing something for you as well. And yeah, I, you now have this, and I don't think anybody had it before because its behavior is too weird. And usually people don't make plugins with algorithms that are so weird that they misbehave and are troublesome to keep under control. Those are the ones I like best, though, so. I am going to get back to work. This is not as long of a video as usual, which I'm sure is fine for everybody. I am busy building things. Like, this is, as you can see, a Axolotti core. You can still get these, but you can't get this particular kind anymore. Um, I have set it up so that I can run a piezo pickup wired to a uh, little wooden tray that I stuck the piezo on so that I can have a hand drum trigger generator firing off like the Eurorack rhythms and things and running some of my electronic sounds but in a way that is really responsive and still triggering electronic sounds in such a way that I can strip it down to basically hand drumming on a wooden plate in order to drive the sound. And you heard some of that with the most recent, uh, with the chimey guitar music. But this goes a little farther than that in a way that I'm gonna have a hard time sharing. But what I've done is set it up so that I can run the hand drum uh, piezo input into this and then run like my X key, also into this. Play a series of notes, the notes get stuck on, and then I can arpeggiate off of it. Meaning I can take that and run it into like my Zox box or some other kind of real synthesizer. And you might say, well, you could be doing that with an Arturia keystep. And I have one of those. The trouble is a lot of things like your key step, certain modular sequencers are expecting a regular machine pulse. And so they're going to try to keep a sustained thing going rather than just machine-like, or like, for instance, the Moog Dayfam is an example of what, I, what does it the way that I'd like to do it. There's something to be said for running a trigger input, human played, into something that reacts instantly and then just plain stops and waits for the next trigger to come in. Some stuff is able to do that and so, some stuff is not. And DFAM, for example, is able to do that. Any of my percussion sounds on the modular are able to do that. This is able to do it with a 16 note sequence and fire off MIDI triggers very rapidly to, to, the, to the point where it feels like it's the same instrument to Zox boxes and things, meaning you could do a hand-drummed 303-style acid bass sequence, except for you could do that to soft clock 
and then play other electronic instruments along with it and try to define shapes in groove to like I'll be doing it to the limit that I'm able to groove at all which remains to be seen but my point being I think I can make that kind of stuff communicate intentionality with music in a way that you don't get anymore and that's an interesting process which I'm looking forward to digging into a little bit so I will leave you with angle filter hope you enjoy that and I'm going to be trying to develop some of this other stuff and with a bit of luck it will lead to cool new things in particular my thought is I can lead this to places where it is very difficult for AI to fake it because AI cannot understand musical intention or the attempt by multiple musicians to entrain to a groove that's being played by the musicians around them and that's what people used to do all day so I feel like there's a lot like lying around on the ground waiting to be picked up and you don't necessarily have to be a virtuoso to do it again one of the things I've been thinking about is uh, I've been recording music off of vinyl records and hopefully I can get back to that posting of peak music examples weirdly certain things like if I'm not mistaken I think some Led Zeppelin are becoming more postable on YouTube these days so I might be able to show examples of that stuff as it was originally heard but um, There, there's a lot for me to figure out here and I'd like to be able to show how music used to be made by I, I remember now one of the things that I recorded was the um, original music for that Titanic last disco one hit wonder uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. funky town so there's an interesting thing about Funky Town, which as long as I'm making the video short, I might as well communicate that. You realize Funky Town was made in the way I'm talking about making it a little bit. Because it was originally recorded on an old digital multi-tracker. And it's not the fact that it's a digital multi-tracker and has a little touch of that doll-like sound, which was revolutionary at the time, but it's nothing special. Like you can get that off of any Behringer uh, converter these days, get an equivalent level of either cruddiness or lack of cruddiness, the particular tonal flavor you can get very easily now for next to nothing. But this old digital multi-track had some quirks because it was one of the very first ones and one of these quirks is you couldn't punch in so one of the things that makes the track funky town be what it is it's not that they were virtuosos it's that the people recording it had to lay down a track from beginning to end whether they were listening to a click or not Anything that was being played, for instance, the guitar, for instance, keyboard riffs, for instance, I think the snare is overdubbed, had to be played straight through from beginning to end as a continuous flow. So there might be some stuff that was sequenced in there, but anything that wasn't sequenced was played without punch-ins, without fixes, without grids, and just listening and trying to place a very simple part exactly where it belongs. And you can still do that. So I'm going to be looking into what it sounds like when you try harder to do that rather than using the computer and modern recording techniques to fix everything up until it is so perfect that it can be easily uh, imitated by AIs with no trouble at all. I feel it's possible to convey more in the way of intentionality even in a musical groove level. I'll let you know how it goes. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.